I'd like to begin this week's look at music theory with a bit of a quiz. What I'm going to do is play you five different bass lines and all you need to do is decide who the bass player was and also what the similarities were between all five bass lines. Okay, so here we go. Here's bass line number one. Baseline number two. Baseline number three. Baseline number four. And finally, baseline number five. How did you do? Okay, well, considering there was nearly 200 years in between bass lines one and five, you probably guessed, and perhaps the title of this video was a giveaway, the first one was Mozart, and that was from his C major sonata. And number two was Bill Black, bass player with Elvis, and that was Heartbreak Hotel. Number three was Ray Manzrak with The Doors, and that was the solo section from Light My Fire. Number four, Paul McCartney, Obladi, 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 Beatles. And finally, Mark Bedders Bedford, One Step Beyond, bass player with Madness. So did you figure out what the connection was between all those five bass lines? Well, if you said triads, you'd be dead right, because triads was indeed the correct answer. Each one of those bass lines was using triads, either major or minor, or sometimes a mixture in different ways. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. And in fact, there are four types of triad. We've already looked at the major and the minor, but on either the side of major and minor. On the flat side, you get diminished triads. And on the sharp side, you get augmented triads. Augmented means to get bigger and diminished means to get smaller or flatter. Augmented again can mean sharper as well. And we'll come back to that. So let's have a look at the first triad. And normally you'll be shown major, minor, and then diminished and augmented. But I like to look at the diminished first and finish with augmented. And when I play these on the neck, you'll see why. So first of all, and I'm going to play everything in C so that we can compare the sounds as well. So first of all, there's our diminished triad. You could also play it with four, three, one, fingers four, three, and one, or you could play it four, two, one. Again, it's entirely up to you, whatever's more, more comfortable. So the first thing to notice about this diminished triad is it's a minor third followed by another minor third. So we have a minor third and the next interval would be known as a diminished fifth or a flattened fifth flat five in jazz terms. And I should also add that there are two ways to play triads. Um, there's more ways to play on random neck. I'll get round to that in a moment. But uh, there's, there's two ways that you can hear triads. You can either hear them as a chord, which means all the notes are played together at the same time. There's a diminished triad chord. Or you can play it as an arpeggio. which means playing the notes one by one. It's also known as a broken chord. So we're breaking up the chord into sections and the order doesn't matter. It's the fact that we're playing one note after another. That makes it an arpeggio. Play them all together, you get a chord. Play them separately, you get an arpeggio or broken chord. So there's our diminished arpeggio or our diminished chord. Another thing to bear in mind about these triads is how they are written out. You'll get chord symbols for most of these triads. Now, for a diminished triad, you'll, so for instance, we're in C. So for a diminished triad, you would get a C 
with a small circle next to it indicating that it's diminished. You would also get another variation of this which is a C dim, D-I-M, short for diminished. Another variation of this is a C with a small M for minor and then a flat symbol and then a five, so C minor flat five. And the other one you might see would be a C with a small M and then a small circle and a five, again, indicating C minor flat five. So those are the symbols you'll get for our diminished triad. So there's our diminished chord we also have three different ways to play these. So to play the chord, obviously you have to play across all three strings, but you can also play a diminished arpeggio with your third finger. So we're playing the same notes, but just in a slightly different pattern. There's my third finger, first finger, fourth finger. So root, minor third, flattened or diminished fifth. And we can also play the same arpeggio starting on the first finger, fourth finger on the same string picks up the minor third, then the second finger picks up the diminished or flattened fifth. So if we take that flattened fifth there and move it up a semitone, now we get a minor triad. Again, if we play all the notes at the same time, there's a minor, minor triad chord. So we get a minor third. And by the way, it's always the third of any arpeggio or chord that tells you whether it's major or minor. So in this case, it's a minor third, so it's a minor chord, or it's a minor triad, an arpeggio. But notice also that we have our minor third, but now the distance between the third and the fifth is a major third. So that's moved up. So chord symbols for the minor triad are C with a small m for minor, C with M-I-N, short for minor, and C with a minor symbol, again, meaning C minor. Same thing with our minor arpeggio, our minor triad. We can play it across all three strings. So we can play chord but we can also play the same arpeggio starting on our first finger. So there's our first finger, fourth finger picks up the minor third, and then the third finger picks up the perfect fifth. And we can also play it from our third finger on the root. First finger picks up the minor third and fourth finger picks up the perfect fifth. So again, these different finger patterns will give you different ways to play the same thing. They give you choices and they can also give you different timbral approaches. By timbre, I mean different sounds on the strings themselves. And they'll allow you to slide in out of notes. So again, it's all about choice. Next up, we have the major triad. So we now have a major third between our root and the third note, but we still have a perfect fifth on the outside. So chord symbols for our major triad are just a C on its own, nothing else. You can have a C with a capital M, meaning major, you can have C M A G, meaning short for major, and you can have C with a little triangle above it, next to it, and that will mean C major again. So again, four different choices for chord symbols. And again, for reading purposes, I really prefer the ones where they're a little bit more spelt out. So C major or C minor, they're just a lot more easy to read if you're reading chord charts, that sort of thing. Okay, the three different positions. So we've got starting on finger four, third finger picks up the third, the major third that is, and first finger on the fifth. Now if we start on a second finger on the root, then we can pick up the major third and then the fifth with our fourth finger. 
But if we start with our first finger on the root, now we can pick up the major third on the same string and the perfect fifth with our second finger like this. And again, this gives you different playing options. So experiment with all these different shapes across the neck. It'll just give you more choices and more different ways of playing the same thing. Finally, we have the augmented triad. Now this is the odd one out because it doesn't really belong to the major scale. So it's not a diatonic triad. Diatonic means belonging to the major scale. So the augmented triad can be found either in the harmonic minor or the melodic minor on scale degree three of either of those two scales, or it can be found in the whole tone scale. If we play root, third, or fifth, has now been sharpened, augmented to be made bigger. There's a normal fifth. There's an augmented fifth. And again, we have three different ways of playing this. We can play it across the neck, across three strings. So we can play an augmented triad chord or arpeggio. We can play it starting on our second finger, first finger on the third note, fourth finger on the augmented fifth. Or we can play it again, starting on a first finger. Fourth finger picks up the third, major third that is. And then here's our augmented fifth, with our third finger. Chord symbols for augmented triads are C with an AUG after it, A-U-G, shortened, or you can have a C with a plus, or you can have a C with a capital M and then a noughts and crosses sign or sharp symbol against the fifth, so C capital M sharp five, or you could have C with a capital M with a plus symbol and then a five, C major augmented fifth. So there we go. There are all the four different types of triad and all the symbols that go with them. And we've looked at three different ways of playing the same notes. So what I recommend is that you take all these shapes and play them all around the neck in different keys to really get used to all these different patterns. Because after all, you're just playing the same notes, but you're playing them in different ways across the neck. And this will lead to different ways of playing them, which is, I think you're going to find really helpful. So again, if you have found all this helpful, please do like and subscribe. And there's also a Patreon to help produce more videos like this. My name's Pete. This is The Infinite Bass. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.